Okay, I want to talk about efficiency in web pages and specifically about the preload and prefetch attribute. We can, if we want, add link tags up inside the head of the document. Now, there's nothing revolutionary about that, but the rel attribute, the relationship, when you define the relationship between this link and the web page, two options that we have are preload and prefetch. Now, the difference between the two of them is that prefetch, I'll put them both here, prefetch is going to be working on the next page. So when you click on a link and you jump to the next page, prefetch is preparing and caching things for that next page. Preload is going to be used on the current page. Now, you may say, well, if I'm loading something on the current page, what's the difference in putting it here in a link tag or down inside the body? If I come in here and I put a link tag or an audio tag, or sorry, uh, an image tag or an audio tag or something like that. The difference is that when you're building single page applications, this becomes a huge deal. If you've got an application that you're building, a web app, and you are going to be showing only small bits of the application at a time. The application is going to have multiple screens. There's going to be multiple images and videos and scripts and all kinds of different things that are built into the different pages. If you want, you can preload in preparation for those things. What the preload tag does is it says the browser is going to be scanning the page top to bottom and loading things as it encounters them. It's going to try to group things together to make things more efficient. The CSS will go together, the JavaScript will go together, the images will be loaded as a set as well. Preload gets done as soon as there's time available. So while the browser is loading all the scripts and so on, and applying the CSS and doing all the work to render what's actually on the screen, it's not going to do the preloads. The preloads will happen after everything that needs to be there on the screen for the user at the very start. Once that's all done, now it goes back to the preloads and says, okay, they're probably going to want this, they're probably going to want this, they're probably going to want this, and you can create a list of these things that are going to be used in the near future on the current page. So, Prefetch, preload, the attributes are going to be the same for these things, but uh, and they're both going to add them into the cache in the browser, but preload, I'm going to use that as my example here. So let's pretend we're building a single page application, and what are we going to put for these attributes? Well, href, that's the file that you want to load. So it could be something as simple as a CSS file. It could be an image, whatever you like. The as attribute is something from this list. So script, style, audio, video, image. In this case, this would be an image. Now, in addition to most of these things, I'm oh, sorry, I'll finish this list first. Fonts, self-explanatory documents, if you're going to be fetching other HTML files to load inside of here. Uh, track. This has to do with the track file to do closed captioning for a video or audio track. Worker. This is JavaScript service worker, so those external JavaScript files that will be spun up to run on another thread. Uh, fetch requests. If you've got some static data you want to fetch ahead, it doesn't require any other parameters. You just want to get the data as soon as possible. And then various objects and embeds. So that's the as attribute. The type attribute works in conjunction with this. If we're saying I want a PNG, then my type would be the MIME type. Oops. So image slash PNG. This MIME type allows the browser to use the appropriate headers. So sometimes there's optimization that can be done. There's compression that can be done. Um, things having to do with cores, the cross-origin resource sharing. Uh, and that leads us into this attribute right here. If you say anonymous, it means that none of the identifying headers, like cookies and things like that, will be sent along with this request. So you can avoid some of the cores issues by saying, you know what, um, I'm not asking, I'm not going to give you any identifying information, so you can send me data so I can use it. Um, yeah, so rel is the relationship. As is a generic type href is the actual file itself. It can be a full URL. You can start with HTTP, HTTPS, whatever. 
type is the MIME type. This helps the browser in setting the appropriate headers and allows it to group things. I was talking about earlier how the CSS, you want to group those together, the JavaScript, the images, do them in bundles. By, a, by creating a whole bunch of link tags and putting the appropriate types, it allows the browser to manage those requests and group the different types together. Again, looking for efficiencies. Um, yeah, so that's it. So these are the options that you've got. And preload, once again, is for the current page. So that would be instances where you're working with a single page application and you want to have all these files as soon as they're available, as soon as you're able to download them. Um, think efficiency. If it's something that the user rarely would use, you don't necessarily have to preload that. Don't force them to download absolutely every single asset you've got just because you want them to cache it. Think about what the users go to. What are the top 80% of the documents that are going to be downloaded by this application. Those are the ones that you can cache. Uh, if things are going to change frequently, don't download those to cache them. Let them get the latest version of that. All right, so I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them below. Um, I will leave a copy of this as a code just in the comments, and I will also put a link to the MDN reference for the preload and prefetch uh, attributes for the link element. All right. Thanks for watching.